welcome back everybody this is james and this is the addictively speaking podcast and today i have a lovely guest named susan day she is an arts therapist and an author and we're going to learn about some mindful arts therapy today guys so this is exciting this is pretty outside the box for us so we're going to learn something tonight i think so susan give yourself a little introduction let the listeners know uh who you are and what you do and where you're from and just a little background on yourself. Well, thank you, James. Thank you for having me. So, yeah, I'm a uh, mindful art therapist um, and I live in Australia. Um, it's really early in the morning here. I know it's the evening where you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. Drastic time difference, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the closest thing we get to time travel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> are you in the future or the past? I'm not really I'm sure. in the future. Yeah, oh, this is wow. what it looks like. Lucky you. Six, six Lucky o'clock. You. <laughs> six, o'clock, six o'clock in the morning in Victoria, Melbourne. Oh wow! So yeah, so I um so mindful arts therapy. I'll just i to just chat about that. Is um the combination of mindfulness and arts therapy, well, obviously. Okay. Um and in particular how it can help ground and work through people through their issues and their problems, and it's um. It's not a, it's not particularly a new therapy, but it's been around for ooh, technically it's been around for about eighty years, but not many people have heard about it. So yeah, it's a, it's I'm really pleased. I'm really thankful that you've let me on, and we're going to have a chat about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm very interested to learn about like what it you know what it's used for, like what types of things does the mindful arts, you know take care of like what are the type of issues that people usually come in with um that you you help them work through oh wow it, it could be anything gosh it could be you know somebody the, a relationship where people can't um communicate clearly um a marriage could be a, a, a child and a parent um young mums you know not coping with with motherhood or, or wanting to do a better job Gosh, that because that's the hardest job in the world. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I've and I've worked with some hairy characters, um, but yeah, entrepreneurs is another because there's often with people who are, are particularly very creative, and they but you get a block. You know, you only get mm. so far with something you've been working with, and um, yeah. So and of course, um, for your audience in particular, addictions, yeah, which are endemic. And very, very sad. Yeah. So when somebody that is struggling with addiction would be looking for help in, you know, outside of the box ways, this would be one of those ways that they could they could come and find some type of um, guidance and, and, and solace. Like, it, it, you know, it's something that can help ground them. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, absolutely. What it does? And, yeah. and it's something they can do with along with the therapist or their counselor. Or their doctor it's something they can do at home because you can't speak to a professional you know psychologist every day well you might right. be able to if you go if you're very rich <laughs> but there are yeah. little <laughs> if there, there are little things you can do um that can help recenter you and reground you um and we've you know even looking just we've all heard of meditation so when i um when i and when i talk about mindfulness I sort of say to people, it's like meditation, but it's on the go. So you, we can be mindful now. Um, you can be mindful driving your car. You could be mindful because you can't meditate and drive your car. You'll end up in all sorts of strife. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so it's, like, it's just about being present and being grounded and just like just allowing your body to relax and feeling, getting that sort of sense of what's happening. So... You know, working with um, working with people who um, have anxiety, which can often be a result of, well, either either from addiction, you know, at either end of the addiction scale, I suppose. Yeah. Um, you know, we could look at, you know, you just don't pick up the pencils and or crayons and start working with them. You might feel them. How do they feel? How do they smell? Um, I, I did my own podcast yesterday and. I was sort of talking about um, the sorts of issues you face and I got, I was working with crayons and I got really angry. I got, I got, I got really annoyed with these crayons because, you know, crayons are sticky and, and they yeah. don't, 
they don't you can't it's not like paint that that is very smooth and quite yeah. beautiful to work with or lovely yeah. pencils that you can control every line you know there's just stuff mm -hmm. happening everywhere <laughs> and I've, i felt this this rage if you, if you know, sort of building up inside me and then i kind of reconnected to something else that had happened earlier on in the day um mm -hmm. and that's what it was really about it wasn't really about the crayons and i kind of worked through it and in a sense that's what we do with um you know people like me and and, and uh, meditation experts and is we work through what's really sitting underneath us and what's really happening and it's really really interesting and it's really really um the one of the things i like about mindfulness and arts therapy is how sort of how powerful it can be um yeah even though you know you, you're not producing a great work of art of any kind yeah it's really really interesting <laughs> Yeah, I'd imagine it would be more of like a, a, a release of emotions on a on a piece of paper or a canvas or whatever the medium you're using. So it'd be kind of like, like you said, like working through an issue it is not going to be a pretty picture. It's just emotion spilled out onto a paper. Is yeah, that kind of like, am I, am, I, yeah. am I close on that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. And I mean, often one of the, the myths of art therapy is that you have to be good at art, um, and that's not true at all. Um, you just, if you can hold a pencil, you can do art therapy. That's my, um, that's sort of my my answer, if, if you like, to that. Um, because we're not producing things we want to hang on the wall. Where right. my, my art therapy manual when I was doing my training is it's just an awful mess. You know, there's, <laughs> there's there's sometimes there's lines and there's squiggly bits. And, you know, I sometimes um, I, I, I look at what some art therapists are doing on um, on platforms, uh, TikTok or Instagram, and they're making these videos and they're producing these really nice, beautiful pieces of work, which is nice. You know, it's you know, it's, it's an accomplishment for, for them and, and it can show people what art can do, but it's not really art therapy. And, and I don't think so. Yeah, so um, excuse me, I worked with a young teen and had that person had had years of abuse uh, in her family um, and from every member of her family. It was just, it was just awful. Um, and she used to just basically pick the pencil up and stab the paper. And that, and that was, her, yeah, and that's how she started. She'd said, and, and she would just, yeah, like this. So um, it was, it's really interesting. Yeah, it, it just gave her that outlet to express her frustrations and her anger. And then um, her her release was music. You know, um, okay. So art therapy, yeah. Yeah, art, yeah, art therapy isn't just about painting and drawing. Um, it, it goes through all the different modalities. Um, and for her, it became music and then it became dance. And mm -hmm. that was really interesting. And so we um we looked at techniques that she could employ on her own at home when she felt the tension rising and the anger and the mm -hmm. frustration um and for her it was was turning was she we'd created a little pod a podcast uh, sorry podcast I mean a podcast a playlist and um yeah it was really really interesting to see her work through that and um but and this is again it, it runs alongside her clinical therapy it runs alongside her medications you know, it, yeah. it's, it, it can be really supportive um, and, and uh, like something you might want to keep in your toolkit. So, yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking, I was just thinking that, that you said it. Um, um, I've been thinking, like, for people in recovery, um, there are, like, some go-to things that, like, you keep in your toolbox when you get anxious or depressed or you're struggling um, with these things. And I think, like, you know, for me, it's like physical activity, running in the gym and music. And these things are like non-negotiable. Like I need them in my life. Like, so I think like, you know, if you are struggling with addiction, that like bringing something like mindful, mindful art therapy into your, you know, toolkit is, it would be quite beneficial because it is just a different type of release, you know, kind of like journaling and and things of that nature, you can kind of like incorporate and like you were saying, music and dance. Um, if I may ask, what style of dance did she do? 
Ah, oh, hip hop, I think. <laughs> really? <laughs> I just, I just wanted to know because I thought that That's might be right. interesting, like a tell on what, yeah. like, because you said there was anger, so I wondered what style yeah. of dance she chose yeah. that, so to that, express that, herself. Absolutely, yeah, and it's a, that's a very good question, James. That's really good because it was it was a style of uh, um, quite aggressive kind of hip hop, yeah, and, a lot of and hard that movements. short, sharp, oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I've, it makes I've sense. Seen, it makes sense. I saw somebody with a what what we might say is a, a classical education. You know, they'd gone mm -hmm. to a privileged all boys school, and oh. I saw them do more of a ballet kind of sweeping movements and gentle flowing and. And that was really, really interesting too, yeah, um, because I think um, in the long run um, it, it, your body, your subconscious is trying to get the stuff out and everyone with an addiction or anybody with any kind of mental health issue, and I have to be honest, I think we all have them. You know, I have anxiety yeah. issues. I mm -hmm. have, um, uh, yeah, all sorts of things happening in my own life. Um and we all have our own different way of expressing that. And it's, I think the wonderful thing is with the mindfulness, when we incorporate that into our lives and then you know, looking at picking up a few practices of art therapy that we, that resonate, really resonate with us, that it can help everyone because we, mm. it's so, so broad. And there isn't a one fix all approach. And that's one of the things I really like about it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it does seem like a, a great addition to the other things that you could be doing in, you know, like for people with addiction in your recovery to add into your repertoire of things that you can utilize, you know, not just about going to meetings, but going to, you know, express yourself artistically in some way, shape or form. And I think that's, you know, it could be it can be very helpful because I myself have used art before. Um, during my addiction and after my addiction, I do enjoy to pick up a paintbrush and some acrylic paints and do some paintings and things like that. Uh, I find it very um, calming and I also find it very um, freeing in your mind to be uh, expressive. I think, you, would you say that that is like a, the purpose of it is to kind of like let you be free in the mind and, and let things come out? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I believe that your subconscious and, um, you know, we hold on to these traumas. It's why we have mm. addictions in the first place. Um, yeah. And I believe it's crying to come out. And so <clears throat> I, I can sit down and, you know, I was working with a little girl and her family and it was really interesting because she began to draw on the table and, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that's one of the rules, you're not allowed to draw on the table. And her parents mm. went to sort of jump up and stop her and I said, no, leave her alone. And and when I had a good look at what she'd drawn, it told me more about what was really going on and pretty much the adults were just talking and we were talking about mm. her. Um, and yeah. she, was only, she was only about four or five. Mm. But um, what she, she was drawing was green circles. And so we all know the, the colour greens about, about nature all colours have a positive and a negative side, but it's also about envy or frustration. Um, mm. But circles are really interesting. So the circles are more about her thinking. It was more about her trying to work out um, what we were talking about. Why were we talking? What was really going on? Um, mm -hmm. As opposed to red jagged lines. So, you know, if, you, if you're talk, talking to a young mum about... Um, her ability to communicate her needs to her husband and she just picked up the red and the lines started getting really sharp and really angry. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's um we can you can do that all the time. Um and one of the, my favorite exercises, you know, particularly working with very busy people or people who maybe are feeling a little bit self-conscious about having art therapy stuff lying around. I mean, my place looks like, a, you know, a slightly used art shop at any given moment, <laughs> stuff everywhere. But you can pick up a pen. I feel we've all got a pen in our house. You can pick up the back of an envelope or a piece of um, your Australia, we call it junk mail, you know, that sort of stuff you get in your letterbox. And yeah. you can just, you just start drawing circles. Little, like doesn't matter what size they are doesn't matter if they overlap and it's just that process of drawing circles and you can do that 
and start breathing. Yeah, obviously you're going to be breathing anyway, but that really deep resonating breathing. That, yeah, so it, it's really powerful. It's really, really interesting work. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it does. It sounds like it's very interesting, and I feel I feel like you can. Um, I feel like you can tell a lot from what people are like doing on their art, like what they're what they're feeling, what colors they're choosing. So you were talking about colors, and they they have correlations to things. So what are some of the color correlations? Um, so if you're um, if you if I'm working with somebody, and um, they're very blue. So they're mm. down, they're depressed. Right. Um, we use the opposite. We use the warm colours. So you might say to them, yeah, well, and this is really good, if, you, if your listeners feel like they need a bit of a pickup and things mm. are not going well, get out the yellow, get out the orange and get out red and do whatever you do, you know, and paint. And, again, working with circles and, and carving circles and things like that. On the other side, if somebody is quite uh, anxious or even frenetic and they, they can't sort of calm themselves, then we go to the cool colours, the blue, greens and purples. So um, it sounds simple. It is simple, I suppose, because it sounds simple because it is simple. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at a deeper level, there's a lot happening, a lot happening. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it seems and again, like, it's I just mean... that release, yeah. Yeah, it seems like, it, you know, if you don't know the color correlations and things like that, like I, me, I would pick up a blue color because I, I, my favorite color is blue. But that could also be my subconscious saying, maybe I feel a bit down or depressed somewhere yeah. in my life. Um, so, yeah, so you would suggest to, to move to other color, brighter colors, lighter colors then. Yeah, if you if you if and we if you're feeling sad or, or, or suffering from depression, yeah, mm. work with the brighter colours. Um, you know, there's there's art therapists that look at daycare and put a daycare decor under people's eyes very early in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so it, you know, often we the, the fashion t in, t in in decor at the moment are very muted colours, which mm. are very calming and very nice. But hey, it's nothing wrong with a bit of you know, get an orange vase or something. Get a get a few throw rugs that are bright yellow, and yeah, you you actually find it lifts your mood. Now, anybody in interior decorating will tell you that. They will tell you. It, but um, and sometimes subconsciously we know we we buy things. You know, um, in Australia, oh, we have we have magpies, and I know they're a very different bird that you have in the UK. Ours are mm. like uber. They're like they're like on some sort of really crazy testosterone kind of magpie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're huge. They're okay. huge. And they they got beaks like this. And they okay. and, but like but like magpies in the UK, they love shiny things. And yeah. they steal things. They steal things. <laughs> so <laughs> only ours you don't argue with. <laughs> but um yeah it's in and we, we do that and say I do that. I'm a I'm a great one for um you know, I've got my Christmas decorations up just behind me and I just thought yesterday, oh, I'm going to have to take them down. What a shame. <laughs> it's like, yeah. But could, I could leave them up, I suppose. You know, don't think it's against the law. But they just cheer me up. I love the lights at night. I just think they're really cool. <laughs> so. Yeah, it is It is almost a relaxing thing when you have your Christmas tree lights on. It's kind of like um, yeah. calming, you know, like we, we turn all out. We, we, and we have lights to have a dimmer as well. But we turn all the lights off and then leave the tree lights on. And it's like a little, you know, mood lighting. And it's just, oh, it's just, it's yeah. just, it's just yeah. Christmas tree lights, you know? Like, how could yeah. that be? But, yeah. but it is comforting, isn't it, in some way, shape, or form? Like, you find some Absolutely. type of relaxation yeah. in it. Yeah. yeah. It's, in, so, and it's again, interesting it's, when you a, find that. Yeah. It's it's funny how we, we do things in our everyday lives. And, but but deep down, there's, there's it's resonating. It's resonating with something that we need. On a, and whether you but you know it's a spiritual level of some kind what whatever you believe in there's something mm -hmm. that we need and you know we talk about colors we talk about the like so you know black's always seen as a very negative color um because mm. it's, it's the color our culture associates with death other cultures mm. associate white um but it can also be a very thought-provoking color so people often like going through trauma um, of and healing, particularly from addictions, will turn to blacks and greys um, because it's a 
it, it, it's bringing out something that they really, really deeply need to express. And hey, like you, you work with people of addictions all the time, and surely it's better to paint something that's a bit bleak and you know perhaps isn't aesthetically pleasing. But it's better to do that, isn't it, than express that addiction in other ways that might be mm. violence or, or you know, yeah. some, something that's going to harm them and the community in some way. Yeah. Yeah, I remember um, when I was in my addiction, I, I did do some painting and they were all quite dark in tone and in colour. And they were very, like, uh, the first painting I did was the background was all colours of blue dark blue, like really dark blues. Um, and then there was, um, I painted, it was a, the, the Christ the Redeemer with his arms out, um, broken, like with cracks all over him and crumbling. But he was all gray. He was all like dark and gray and falling apart. Um, and then I put, uh, I have two tattoos, uh, the alpha and the omega. So the beginning and the end and they were both kind of like hovering above him. I painted him while I was drinking. I was drinking with some friends and I started that painting. Um, and it was always, I always kept it with me because I felt like it said something. It's, it spoke to me in a way. Um, and I don't know why I still in my, I still in my head think like that I painted that for a reason. I don't really know why, but I definitely painted it for a reason. Um, absolutely yeah it's yeah. amazing yeah it's really and also that that figure with the arms out is mm -hmm. um is in is in a lot of um cultures it it represents the sort of giving up that all, all yeah. the all the letting the letting go and exposing yourself you know because I, I also work with animals and you know dogs lay on their back um as a form of submission and what mm -hmm. they're actually, they're not really saying rub my belly, although <laughs> it's very tempting. Um, they're actually exposing all their organs and saying, mm -hmm. I trust you so much, I'm going to expose all my organs that you might want to, you know, that my my wolf ancestors may have ripped out at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when we, in that, in like you say, that Christ, that, that image we have of Christ and the redemption is basically saying, here I am, God or yeah. the universe. Um, yeah. you know, help me or take me or do what you want yeah. with me. You know, that sort of yeah. thing. not so much giving up, but we're giving out or we're giving, we're opening ourselves. Yeah. It almost to, seems um, like I was painting, like I painted a cry for help. Like I was like, you know, like, help yeah. me. And look at, yeah. look at me. Yeah. Help me. Look at you. Yeah. Why can't yeah. I help myself? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. that's very interesting. It's it's powerful, isn't it? Yeah. It's interesting that's to talk about image. it. It, it's, it's interesting to talk about it because I painted all these, I painted a bunch of things, um, you know, dr like drinking and not drinking. Um, but I always feel like the ones where I was drinking or in my addiction were very, there was, there was definitely purpose behind it. There was anger behind it. There was sadness behind it. There was all these emotions that I, I didn't really know how to express. And they only came out through this, these pieces of art that I was doing. Um, and there were a lot of times, like um, I told you before we went on, I did this painting of a, it was like a skeleton with like giant wings and there was fire behind him. And there was a, he was at a bar and it was kind of like all my inner, it was like an inner demon, right? That's how I look at it. It was like this inner demon exactly. that was, that was tempting me. And there was vodka and a, and a, and a shot glass and a beer. And it was like, it was just saying like, this is, this is evil. This is the thing that's destroying you. And I was painting that, but I couldn't actually physically admit it to myself or admit it to anybody else. But I, you know, expressed it through that piece of art and that I never like would show, I'd never show anybody the painting. You know what I mean? Like I just, I, I did it. And it was just like, that's what I felt inside yes, of myself. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And again, uh, you know what, like we discussed, it's it's not about something you might hang on your wall. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a really powerful image and some people do. And some, and mm. you know, often when we, we're working with bringing joy into people's lives or even a sense of calm or healing, we I always encourage people to put the paintings up or, or their, 
the collage or the sculpture um, in some way because it, it's a little bit of a reminder of, of the joy they can bring. But there are other art that we, we go, nah, it, it's had its purpose. Right. Your painting achieved its purpose. It's because you somehow, uh, you know, and the, and you know that recovering from addiction is a lifelong process. So this yeah. is something that you, you'd work through and, yeah, it's really powerful. That's a really powerful image. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when people do the art, right, and like you, like you were just saying, like you know, there's some that you you make people hang up, right? Because it brings them a certain feeling, and you want them to kind of like have that reminder. Uh, when they do that, they get to take they get to take all the the pieces of art that they create. Do they take them home, right, for themselves to keep, or do you tell them like some of the ones that are aren't so happy, and do they do they, do they just get discarded? Do you like throw them away, or do they keep them for themselves? Or? It's up to, it's up, yeah, I, I don't keep them. I'll often take a photo <clears throat> of them or a screenshot because mm. we do a lot of work online. Um, yeah. But it's, and I would just keep that for my records. I actually destroy them as well after, you know, once we've got, to, uh, we've either not seen the client anymore because um, a lot of privacy issues, of course. But, yeah, I okay. say to, I always say to my clients, what do you want to do with them? And, and you know, having an art journal is is can can be really useful because you can you can pop everything in there um and you can close it if you need to or you can open it again if you need to reflect on it um but i think uh i think and you might be able to because you've worked probably with as many people as i have is that people are often quite proud of their journey their healing journey mm. and mm -hmm. and you know and they say here i am here i am you know this was my my dark point where I was, you know, stabbing the paper and drawing really dark circles and making an awful yeah. mess. And here I am with this really beautiful painting of me standing on a hill with the, the wind in my hair, my, my perfect, my dream place, and you know. So the, the art journal or, or just the paintings or the drawings or whatever it is they're working with, um, it, is, it's like a roadmap of the journey, of the healing journey. And... Yeah, some a lot of people like to keep it, and they feel quite really emotionally connected to them. So um, yeah, I was just another going to say uh, me. I just burn stuff. I don't, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just done. But that's me done. <laughs> no, I was going to say it does it, it for somebody that does that is in recovery that goes that has gone through that. Uh, you do kind of feel emotionally connected to those things, and and it's also like you said. Um, kind of like a roadmap of that journey and if you feel down at some point you can look back and say well you're not as down as that painting or you're not as down Absolutely. as that picture yeah. because that yeah. was the bottom that was the hardest bit you've come far and then look at all the other pieces of art that you've created yeah. and you can kind of like kind of brings it can kind of bring perspective to you I would I would imagine like uh yes you know being yeah. able to kind of look back through all that if you have an art journal or if you have the paintings or the pictures, because you can go through and see the progression, the scene. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and you can think you're having a really bad day, like you said, but if you go back and you go, oh, I'm not that person yeah. anymore. Yeah. And yeah. at least I'm, yeah. Moving, and I'm moving forward and moving, you've, you know, as long as you're moving forward. And we all know with, with addiction, uh, sorry, addictions is that that relapse yeah. And but you'll you know you've traveled so far and but you might relapse a little bit but you never go back to that spot that point mm. that really yeah, hopefully, dark point hopefully. hopefully yeah most of the time Ho hopefully. yeah hopefully and if you do you've made the journey before you'll do it again you can do it again yeah you'll do it again yeah and you'll find the artwork changes as well yeah it's really interesting and people's yeah. music taste changes through their through their healing journey, which I find also mm. very interesting, and you know the, their ability to to relate to to the to the mediums like to sculpturing or to to another um, another really powerful thing <laughs> we use is um, play doh or modelling clay, mm. and just for some people, just being able to to manipulate it and, and enjoy the texture of it um, yeah. is really interesting. It's really it's it, and again it's that. That need that, that's resonating somewhere deep, deep down inside that they need to express something. 
and yeah. feel some. Yeah, so it's really powerful. Yeah. I have a five-year-old, and he has played out. And I can't tell you, I can't tell you how relaxing it is to just <laughs> play with Play-Doh. Play and I don't exactly. like he he wants he wants to make all type of stuff, and I just want to hold it in my hand and like mush it go. about and like I like to roll it in the balls. And just <laughs> the feeling of it rolling in your hand, you, you know. I don't know yeah. why. And then I just yeah, make a it's bunch really of powerful, them. isn't it? Yeah. And then I, and then I'm done, and I'm the happy. And he's like. He's like, Daddy, can we do this? And I'm like, I just want to make balls, buddy. I just want to I just want to make circles. And then he'll just go around and smush them all. And I'll be like, all right, cool, thanks. <laughs> Worked really hard. I was like, that one was almost a perfect circle. Why would you do that? Yeah. I get really I get really sad inside because he's he's just he's just smushed all the perfect balls I made. And I'm like, oh man. And he's having that? a wonderful time. Yeah, and he's enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's having a great time. He like starts smushing the balls all together, and I'm like, "No, you're making one color now. No, you're ruining it." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and about that, the, like the, the the rounding the circle, or where you make a sausage. I still like making yeah. sausages. Yeah, and yeah. it's just that sense of it, it, there's something very deep happening with that tactility that we don't have anymore because we a lot of us don't work with our hands like we yeah. used to. And it's also then again, it's that expression of, of forming something that's, you know, quite beautiful. Um, yeah. It's really interesting. You know, one of I um, practice Tai Chi, and there's a there's a move called caressing the moon, which I, I want to. Mm. Um, <laughs> but it's about rolling your hands around the moon, and she's and you, yeah, you you kind of roll your hands, and she's like mm. caress the moon, and mm. it's the same sort of thing. And I'm thinking, I really, I just would happy to be doing this. Never mind about all the other moves you have to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally yeah, 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 yeah. It's really interesting. It is, yeah. yeah, it is weird how relaxing it is because you're just like, <laughs> I'm just sat there and I'm just rolling it around. I'm just trying to get the most perfect ball. And then I put it down and I look at it and I think, that one's pretty good. And then I move on to the yeah. next one. <laughs> yeah. And then my son's like, bam. And I'm like, oh. Hey, bam. Oh, it's fun. And I, yeah. And I was like, oh, man, that was my favorite one. Why would you do that? Uh, and I, I'm like, I don't want to play Play-Doh with you anymore because you're ruining all the great, all the great stuff I make. And he was like, yeah, but Daddy, we have to like, we have to mush it all together. And I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. Colors don't go together. Don't mix the colors. <laughs> Maybe you need your own Play-Doh. <laughs> I you know that's what? I, I think that's exactly it. I need yeah, my own yeah. play doh. You do. I'll keep yeah. all the I'll keep all the colors separate. They'll all be their own color. <laughs> his his first set of play doh, it all just ended up making like a a gray. It was a gray. Yeah. He mixed yeah, gray. play doh together until it made a gray, a gray yeah. purple color. Yeah, that's right. Color? Yeah. Which is like funny enough, it's quite a relaxing color if you look at it because it's like yeah, a yeah, yeah, quite calming, gray. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. weird, which is strange. I never thought about that either until we're having this conversation about art therapy. And I think, you know what? It's actually quite relaxing, that color. Yeah. It's <laughs> like when you mix all your all, kids get all the paint and it's always, and they go, it's brown. I went, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. It's always going to be that, brown of some kind. That's, yep. Yeah, that's my son who's just like, he takes all the paint in his thing. We just painted birdhouses the other day. We did birdhouses. Um, Sweet. Yeah, so we built these birdhouses uh, that we got for Christmas. We got like it's like a four pack of birdhouses, which is which is oh, quite nice. cool. And we all we all got to sit down and build them, and then we all got to paint them. And yeah, like he just is like dunking his paintbrush into every single paint thing, and then it's like just that on him. He's not following those rules. No, he's not. He's not. He's definitely a kid. You know. I like you know when that. you get. It's it's like when you get older, you're like you're very systematic. You're like this. I'm painting with this yeah. color, and I will clean my brush that's after right. I'm done, yeah. and I will paint with the next. And he's just like that's, that's the rules. Yeah. And he's just painting it all like. Yeah, I wish I could show. Can I show you his? I want to show yeah, you his. I'd love to see it. Yeah. I don't know why I want to show you this, but I just want to show you it. <laughs> Sounds great. So this this is his birdhouse. Ah, oh, that's good. Look at it. How yeah, how great that is. Yeah, it's I really. Like that. And yeah. there's a lot of good colors in there, like you're saying. Yeah. Like he's got um, he's got some oh, yeah. really bright oranges and pinks and stuff like that. But then you go to one side, and it's just like that, that gray, oh, that gray yeah. and brown, yeah. where you just hit the brown. But it, it, it's that's really, really interesting. Yeah, it's really yeah. interesting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, and and he's. I don't. How old was he? Five? Did you say? 
Yeah, it's about five and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot of thought. Most five year olds just, you know, they do a little bit yeah. and then they get fed up and someone says, you know, you've got to finish it. So they just slap whatever colours come in and, and you end yeah. up with your brown again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's lovely. Yeah. Good on him. But I love that. Yeah. I love that with kids. They just don't follow the rules. You know, they haven't had an art yeah. lesson in their life and they're, you no. know, they're, they're often the most receptive. Um, obviously, children are particularly to art therapy, um, and it's because they're not they're not conditioned by the rules. They, you know, no one no one's told them they can't paint, or <coughs> they're not artistic. All four year olds mm. are artistic, and I think we all need to be artistic. I think we all need to accept that we have our own special way of expressing art in some way or form. Yeah, mm. <laughs> it's good. that's true. Yeah, it, it is nice that kids. Yeah, I think you should let them be expressive in their in their own way and encourage them. You know, it's like when these kids are coloring outside the lines and it's like, no, no, it has to be inside <laughs> the lines. But outside the lines is what makes them happiest, you know? Absolutely, and, yeah. You know, and it, it's just being free, isn't it? The lines will not yeah. hold me. I will color outside Exactly, them. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and we can, tra- you know, and these are the kids that, you know, become entrepreneurs because they're mm. incredibly creative and they have, they're not bound by our, our rules, our lines. Constrict, yeah, the constriction. Yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah, it's really, norm. really interesting. Yeah. yeah. So mm. um, I think a lot of um, behaviour problems we have with children as they get older and even with adults is because they've been, they've got to, you've got to colour in the lines. Someone told them and, and reinforce that. You have to colour yeah, in over. the lines. Over and over and over and over, over and, and over and over, and over again. Over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. guess what? You don't. I got. I. Mm. <laughs> I've never been into. I like. I used to love coloring when I was little, but mm. there's something in me that doesn't like it now. So the, mm. you know, there's been a, a great um, interest, if you feel like, all the popularity of coloring books, and yes, but I can adult, see adult how. It, oh yeah, I, I can see how it really works for adults and mm. why they really enjoy it. Um, and somebody gave me one. It was quite um, complex, but I got quite fed up and I got a marker and I moved the black lines out. <laughs> I was like, I like oh, I, I need to, I know I want to do this a bit more. And I, yeah, I, I changed it. I re- redesigned it. <laughs> I like, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not staying within those lines. You can't keep me. You can't. Ah, oh, let's go. You get boxed. You got a. You get boxed in. You get boxed in. Box you got to think in. outside no, the box. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But for some people, that brings them a lot of comfort. So I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying right. it's not your. If it's not your thing, then that's okay mm. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you're also an author. Yes. What What have you written? Let us know about that. I have, uh, oh, well, I've been writing for a very long time. Um, okay. And I started, um, well, my first book, I was four, and we'd been to a trip to Ireland. And mm-hmm. I must have got quite fed up because at the end, the last page, all the words kind of fall off the page. <laughs> <laughs> and I've still got it somewhere. Um, oh, but I'm, <laughs> um, I'm um, what I did um, is I start last year I started working on developing um, mindful art therapy books and mm-hmm. there uh, and for me it was about introducing people to the concepts of mindfulness and art therapy and mm-hmm. also um, you know not everyone can afford to see an arts therapist or even a counsellor not everyone feels it might not be their thing so I, they're kind of super cheap they're 99 cents for an ebook. Um, the print books obviously are designed so they're actually designed so you can write in them and you can draw in them. Mm. Um, but obviously they're, they're going to be more expensive. In, in Australia, they're about $25 or about $15 in the US. Um, so okay. it's, yeah, so it's a, it depends on the currency, which is you know, right, right, right. changes everything. Yeah. So, and um, yeah, so looking at um, the, the, the <coughs> most popular book, you know, I have five out at the moment. Uh, the, yeah, so the, sorry, the most popular title is Healing. And that just mm. takes you through 25 different kinds of exercises and activities to help people in their healing and their trauma journey. Um, and um, there's more coming. I'm currently working with an editor at the moment. I've written a book about building emotional resilience in preteens because that's a really important age. 
that if we can yeah. start to build self-awareness and emotional regulation um, before they hit adolescence, um, things might be, might you know, they will less likely to go down those paths of addiction um, as, as things become more frustrating and, you know, the, their life becomes out of control. So it's right. about ga- regaining back that control emotionally. I suppose mm-hmm. um yeah and i've got other plans in the work for the one thing that i'm i'd really like to I'm, well i'm starting a collaboration with uh, a, a magazine in, that's based in new zealand and it's here in australia and it's also in the uk and that's mm-hmm. young mum young mums now you know you've got a five-year-old you know your your wife and partner will tell you that you know there's no time in the day to do anything oh, <laughs> so i want to work i know I know. I remember what well it was like. Aware. My two have grown up, thank goodness. But yeah, I remember. And I think I want to look at creating a book for mums and dads um, where they can like pick up a pen and use the back of an envelope to do art therapy, where they don't mm-hmm. need to have a great, you know, a great kit set out, or they don't have to get out the paints and the brushes. And um, I want to be able to equip them with a few things. Um, that they can do to help them feel centred, to help them realise, you know, how brilliant they are and what a great job they're doing and um, and help them through that journey as well and work on some of the frustrating, thing, frustrating things, sorry, I should say. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, yeah, no, I like a, I can't stop writing. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. sounds, it sounds like you got a lot going on, which is great. Um, <laughs> You're very, it sounds like you're very busy and you're creating some great stuff, it sounds like, for people who, you know, might, you know, not want to jump straight in, that they can get their feet wet with a book of their own and kind of give it a taste, see what they think, and then hopefully, you know, come come into it and, and utilize it in their journey, wherever they're at in their journey, you know, with addiction and recovery or with anxiety and depression or mental health issues or relationship things. Um, it seems like it's a very, um, you know, broad spectrum of things that this can, you know, really help with. Um, yeah. And you were, you were just saying, um, and I, now it's just, I've just lost it in my mind. What I wanted to ask, <laughs> but it was like, the, it oh, oh, it was the concepts of mindfulness and art therapy. What are the basic concepts that go along oh, with yeah. this? So sweet. So what I do in my book is is I have a little paragraph to get people started about mindfulness. So it's just about sitting somewhere comfortably, um, taking three long deep breaths, and kind of as you as you're doing that, kind of checking in on your body. So some people mm. start from the crown of their head, other people start mm-hmm. from their toes, and just kind of working through and going, oh, how am I feeling today? You know, um, I, I might be a bit upset about some guy cut me off in the car park or, you know, and, and just accepting how you might be feeling without judgment mm-hmm. um, okay. and also moving on as well. And that paragraph is repeated at the beginning of every art therapy a- activity in all five books. And there's also at the front of the books, it, I, I sort of explain it in a little bit more detail. Um mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so that sort of sets, and then moving through the, you know, like when, when you're painting or drawing or creating something, how am I feeling? You know, what, you know, like me with the crayons, why am I so angry with these crayons? They're yeah. just crayons, you know. Um, and there are certain, again, like we talked about colors, about evoking different emotions, there mm-hmm. are certain mediums. So if somebody's quite anxious, and they're feeling like they don't have that kind of control that they need to bring into their lives. Do you have, like, I don't know what they're, they're called, gel pens in the UK or the US? Um, mm-hmm. And they're very yeah, they're, they're very beautiful to use, but you have to use them very yeah. slowly. You can't scribble yeah, with they, them. You can't because it's smear. not like paint. You go, ah! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they smear, yeah. don't they? They smear if you they touch do. them. If they you do. Go so, over with your hand. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, again, just if somebody's really anxious... And this is where the colouring comes in, but you don't need to use a colouring book, is to use something like that pen. Or, mm. But on the other hand, if somebody's tense and they're, they're all blocked up, that paint, because paint works quickly and freely and the sensations, the mindfulness 
uh, of you know what is the what does the brush feel like on the canvas what does it feel like to move that paint around um mm. yeah it's it's a it's exploring the tactility, I suppose, and the sensations that are involved with the art supplies and mediums, and um, and and just enjoying it for what it is, mm -hmm. like like rolling yeah. well the play doh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's gonna stick with me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, hey, bring that into the art that our therapy. You know, you can yeah. just get some play doh and just roll it in your hand. It's a great feeling. Yeah. I highly it's a great recommend feeling, it. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we, I do do that. There's, I think there's, I think I use the clay in nearly mm -hmm. every one of the books and different things about yeah. sculpting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, That's good. Do you find that different things require different mediums? Like, like you were just saying that paint is for people who are kind of like blocked up and have something that they need to let out. Are there different? Like, do you you use different forms like of art for different things? Like anxious people, depressed people, um, angry people, like, yeah. do they all yeah. have like a, a place like you can say, oh, if you're angry, this is, this is what you should do. This is the art. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and different people will dif respond differently. Um, charcoal is mm -hmm. another medium that's hard to work with. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, so um, people who feel like their lives of, you know, getting out of control might not enjoy charcoal. Mm. Um, whereas control freaks certainly don't enjoy it, but it might be mm. something they need to work with. Again, just about that sort of bringing things together for them, about, mm. um, yeah, feeling that sense of being grounded. Um, you know, even even using, I've looked at, because um, now with the, with the art therapy, they're looking at virtual reality and there's new mm. research, yeah, into using technology. And, and I think I say to people, you know, get your phone and go outside and every day take a photograph of something that you think is beautiful mm. or or get a close-up like the, the phones now I've, I've got a fabulous phone you can basically just put it a millimeter away from something and it it will take a, yeah. a, a shot yeah. and focus um and sometimes we need to concentrate on the details uh, or the little things in life and appreciate them uh and to build a sense of gratitude um mm. that we we tend to no, you know, our culture really doesn't um, help us appreciate things or feel so so grateful as we should do for mm -hmm. what we have. Um, you know, you might not live in a fabulous mansion or it might be a rainy day and you want it to be sunny, um, but it's about stepping back and, and being grateful and sometimes getting your camera, getting your phone out and taking close-ups of things helps us focus on the details because it's the details that really matter in life mm. I think, yeah so yeah there are there's so many different um different materials different ways of, of expressing art that will help us emotionally help us heal build change refocus and get over addictions yeah awesome um so is there anything else that you would like to talk about? Is there anything you have coming up that you'd like to promote or share with the audience um, that they should be on the lookout for from you? Yeah. Well, I'm, I've started podcasting myself. Um, oh. I haven't got up to, up to the interviews yet. So um, my my little my brand is Mindful Arts with an S Therapy. Um, mm -hmm. And you can pretty much find that. If you Google that, you'll find that, I suppose, just about anywhere. The website's okay. mindful mindfulartstherapy.com.au as in Australia. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, if people want to reach out with their with their ideas or their experiences, I'd be great to hear them. It'd be really interesting to connect. So we're on I'm on all the socials. Yeah, I'm trying TikTok. <laughs> it's interesting. It, which is an interesting one. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. I also yeah. have tried I try on the TikTok as well for the the podcast and everything. So it is an interesting medium to use and to figure out. Um, cause it is good for expressing things. I've used it as, um, a tool to, um, just vent and talk to people like quite candidly, you know, about how I've been feeling and just seeing what the response is like from that is interesting as well. Cause sometimes you yeah. get wow. some people who are really great and sometimes you get some people who aren't really great. So it's, it's interesting mix of, you know, things that come yeah. your way on TikTok. 
but it is it is uh, it is it's part of what the world is today so you have to kind of put yourself on all type of platforms and do all this stuff and you know yeah. in order, order to gain traction i mean you'll learn uh doing a podcast that you have to yeah it's all about social media and creating reels and content and promoting 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 and it's it's um it's a it's a grind mentally and everything too because it's you want to see growth you want to see results and sometimes like you said now what you just said you gotta smoke you gotta focus on the smaller things the tiny victories they're also victories as well like even if they're small Absolutely. ones they're still yeah. wins you know yeah. and you kind of lose sight of that because you're focused on a bigger picture and and we do we get like, lost in those numbers don't we and yeah. you know you just get, if you've got a tribe of about a thousand people you know or 15 or 2000 that's not a lot of people but mm. you can really do well you can really speak to them and you yeah. know the wonderful what i've learned from the different social medias is that they obviously have a different age group um, mm -hmm. that they speak to but i what i found is really interesting is how they speak and so mm -hmm. yeah the most popular um we have a quiz show a very irreverent quiz show here in australia called hard hard quiz um and it's you must watch it it's, it's very very funny the, the host okay. is um i just saw him perform live but he um he just insults people in <laughs> it's just, and they insult him back and it's very australian uh -huh. um but he just had a, a special about um the battle of the influences so we got mm. all these fabulous gens i love gen Z. it's my favorite favorite group of people uh, he got them on and it was really interesting because they'd gone like you say they're all TikTok influencers some on youtube mm -hmm. but there was yeah. that sense of being able to speak personally to a camera now mm. my generation we don't do that you know we, yeah. we you know we present things i i was you know if you want to talk to someone you wrote a letter and, and it had to be <laughs> formatted <laughs> Yeah. It, had to, it had to be formulated and set out in a special way you know yeah. it is it's just so interesting that we have all these different kinds of platforms but it's how we use them and how we the expectations i suppose which is i find mm -hmm. um i find really really interesting and i think that's where um you, you have to either i'm not very good on speaking to the camera um i've done live radio which is um is nothing compared to this podcasting is easy oh, you should be on live radio <laughs> it's just if you there, there's lots of rules that govern community radio um I in know, australia yeah. that, that don't they don't apply to commercial radio stations so that you're mm -hmm. not allowed to talk about um any kind of brand or you know business or anything unless they're a sponsor um oh, okay obviously yeah um and if there's we had this happen a few times. If there's seven seconds of silence because you've forgotten to put the, the microphone and volume up or you didn't hit one button, you hit the other button, um, alarms go off. Oh, gosh. Oh, alarms. And, and, and flash, alarm and like, like a whoa, 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 and flashing lights. It's the most terrifying oh. thing I've ever experienced. So. Goodness. Um, but yeah, we, it, it's again, it's that, that's a different medium again, and it's a lot of it's a mm. lot of fun. Yeah, you can laugh all the way through it. So um, mm. yeah, I just I, I think um, you know I think for people listening that are that are looking to build their brand and they're looking to get out there is yeah, like you said, don't focus on the big numbers. You know, um, uh, just just build your tribe. Start start yeah. connecting. Start you know and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's more about cool. I've realized now I'm a year into it and I've realized now it's more about networking and connecting with people because these people yeah. will connect you with other people who will connect you with other people who will help you build what you're trying to accomplish and you're yeah it's not everything's not instantaneous and that you can this this is something that takes time it takes effort and it takes quality and it takes a lot of different things and you know, nowadays success is measured by how many views and how many this and how many likes and what did you do? Um, uh, for me personally, mine is about am I am I reaching the people I want to reach and are they getting the message I'm trying to send them? The, the so message you're about quality. 
Yeah, and I'm I'm trying to it's give people yeah. I'm trying to give people um, helpful things that are things that I think will be helpful, you know, um, to help them find recovery and to find balance and to be able to find, you know, because I'm, I'm hopefully I'm speaking to people who are either thinking about coming into recovery or who are already in recovery and that these are things that they can put in their tool bag, you know, like we spoke about mm -hmm. earlier, you know, there are things that I think that you, you know, that you need, like there are things in my recovery that I need that I have to have because it helps with my anxiety. It helps with my depression. It helps with my mental health. It helps me cope because before I didn't cope well with, the trauma that's happened in my life. So I used drinking to, to, to numb it all. And now I have to cope with things and I have to learn how to cope with them. And I think being able to give people, you know, an interview and to be able to listen to somebody that does mindful arts therapy could be something useful in their tool bag down the road. You know, it, oh, could, be something, yeah. it could be something that really, you know, sticks with them. So um, yeah. yeah, I'm just grateful that you reached out um, and wanted to be part of the podcast. I really appreciate your time getting up early in Australia to do this interview. I really, truly appreciate it. Um, I think it's cool what you do. I think it's very interesting um, because I do enjoy art and I do, I do enjoy artistic things. And I, I like I said, I've used, I've painted in my addiction. I painted after my addiction. Mm -hmm. and, I can definitely see the contrast in where I was and where I am and how they are very different now. Um, and it was really interesting because I got some insight from you on different things that are calming and relaxing and things that I didn't even think about before. But now that I've had this conversation and, you know, we've done this podcast, I, you know, it'll stick with me because just because of this. Yeah. Um, so I want to ask you one final question and this is, I'm going to start doing this at the end of my podcast now. So, like I said, there are tools in your tool bag. What are some? What are three things in mindful arts therapy that you think that people in recovery would benefit from? Um, I would say to keep going mm. and to celebrate the small wins and the mm. small successes, and to even if they if even if they listen to this and think, oh, that's, yeah, that's nice, but it's not really for me, don't dismiss it straight away. So, so mm. down the track, they might find, um, they might find that, that they'll come across arts therapy or mindfulness or both um, in, in another realm and they'll go, yeah, no, I just do a podcast once and, yeah, no, I, I'm getting this now. And sometimes, sometimes people's recovery and their healing is drip fed. You know, slowly over a little bit of time. Yeah. But I would say, you know, give it a go. Pick up that pencil, pick up that pen, nip down to your cheap shop. You don't need to buy terribly expensive art materials. Um, and give it a go and do what you enjoy doing. And putting mm. that time aside. And I think it was, you know, I've been going through a lot of Instagram posts and then, you know, um, and I think the year 2024 is going to be our year for self-care. And mm. that can take all sorts of forms and all sorts of ways. And, you know, gardening is a, is a great way of, mm -hmm. even though it sounds weird and it's physically really demanding, um, it's a great way to take good care of yourself because, again, you get your hands in there and you get, start that grounding. Um, and a lot of I find a lot of people that have gone through addictions and uh, OCD and, and all that sort of stuff is they will say at some point, they always say, oh, there was a time when I used to enjoy something. You know what I mean? Mm. And it might have been gardening. It might have been woodwork. It might have been making mm. birdhouses. It might have been um, drawing, doing portraits. Um, mm. And I say to them, well, you need to reconnect to that so at some point um, and give it another go. But don't mm. be judgmental. Don't, don't worry about the outcome. Don't, don't judge what you're doing. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy that process. So was that more than three things? Sorry. I can't carry uh, you know what? They, they all, they were all very good things that people in recovery can use. I, I love all of them. Uh, Susan, it's been an absolute pleasure. I would like, I thank you for coming on. Um, 
And yes, uh, all the listeners out there, if you're listening, check out Susan Day and I will we'll attach all the links in the description in the bios of this podcast and you can check her out um, and, you know, have a look, see if mindful arts therapy might be something that you can use. It's always good to have tools in your tool bag. And I think this is, you know, something that can be greatly beneficial to people in recovery and to just people dealing with mental health issues, because I think nowadays it's quite prevalent that mental health and addiction kind of run, you know, parallel side by side, people struggle with both. So, and people have both of those things as problems in their life, mental health and addiction. So um, I think this would be a great addition, uh, you know, to their tool bag. Um, but thank you, Susan, again, and have a great day. And you too. Thank you for having this. me. It was a real joy. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, this is uh, this is it, and uh, we are signing off.